The DJI Avada is the best FPV drone beginners can buy if they want an easy way to get into the hobby. Except, it's really not. It's plagued with issues, comes with a very particular controller, and to add insult to injury, it certainly really isn't an affordable option for many beginners. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you why this drone should be your first, everything that's better and worse with it than the competition, and then also make sure you know what else you're going to need to get out and fly it. But first off, what the heck even is this drone? This is the iFlight Defender 20, and it's a 3S Cinewoop with what can only be explained as close to GoPro quality built right on into it. Straight off the bat, it does seem like a DJI Avada ripoff, and that too did make me very skeptical of it at first, but after using it for the past week, I now can tell you that you're going to love it a whole lot more than you think you might right now. For full disclosure here too, I have been sent this drone by iFlight for free, however, as always, I've taken it out, properly fact-checked everything, and they also won't be leaving any of the shortcomings out. Rest assured, those are coming later on in the video. So look, getting your first drone can come in so many different ways, but there are three unique challenges that this one offers solutions to that when combined together really set it apart from most others on the market. The first is one of the biggest hurdles that I've genuinely only just started to understand what like three years into this hobby now, which is how to effectively and safely charge your LiPo batteries. You've got to learn what the cells are, the voltage ranges, the cells health, how to charge them, how long to run them, and even how to store them. There is so much to learn, and the crazier part is that it's different with every single battery too. So like it did for me, it comes with time and practice, but the thing here is, until you have done the time and the practice, there are a few serious mistakes that you could very well be making that not only pose a risk to your drone, but also your very own safety. So what this Defender 20 offers is a completely different way to charge, store, and use the batteries. It comes with one of these 900 milliamp hour 3S LiPo batteries that iFlight are calling smart batteries. What it does in simple terms is charges via the USB-C charger, which is included. It'll discharge itself down to the correct storage levels, if not used for, I think it's three days. And it's also got a low battery warning set up on the drone video feed, so you know when you need to land. All of this is not only a whole lot safer, but it's also gonna help the battery's life last even longer. The second thing that often gets asked by budding beginners is, can it carry a GoPro for filming? The short answer here is heck no, but that doesn't mean that you're actually gonna need one. If you remember from before, I mentioned that it has a built-in, close to GoPro sort of quality camera system, and really, it is exactly that. It's called DJI 03, and it's the exact same camera system that's inside the DJI Avata, so if you've ever seen videos from that, they'll be the exact same quality with this. It actually means there's no additional cost to get great video footage that you can share with your friends, and it even has the potential to one day earn you money if that's an avenue that you might want to take. The third thing that really threw me off when I was getting started was throttle control. That means adjusting the amount of power going into your motors and doing so with, well, control. <laughs> the lower power that this drone puts out combined with a little bit of its weight actually provides what I think, I don't know, it might be one of the easiest to control throttles that I've ever flown. Obviously, at first, this is going to be difficult and I don't blame you if you get frustrated with it because I felt the exact same way at first as well. I just think that this drone in particular is going to make the learning curve that little bit easier and I'm all about making it easier. In fact, over the past month, I've sent my newsletter subscribers exclusive tips, tricks and even video content that I haven't publicly shared before, all to try and help them become better pilots as easily as possible. So if you want to sign up for that, it's 100% free and you'll find a link for it down in the description box below. Now, there are a ton of smaller features as well that all really add up to create a great experience from all aspects, one of which I didn't actually really expect to like, but now I've fallen in love with, and I'll let you know what that one is in just a moment. Here's the best three features though that you don't normally see with other drones aimed at beginners. Firstly, the price. Now look, it's not what I would classify as cheap, it's 430 bucks, but it's also very reasonable for what you get, especially with O3 being the price that it is and it being built in. With all that being said though, the price of the drone is not what I'm actually talking about here. With something like the DJI Avada, you buy the drone for a premium of $630 and then the moment you want to, you know, grab an extra battery, you get absolutely slapped in the face with another $130. What's that? You want to fly with a normal controller now? Well, you have to use DJI's controller, which is yet another $200. So with that in consideration, an extra battery for the Defender 20 is almost a laughable $19. And before you think, is rated to 18 minutes of flight time, whereas the Defender 20 is rated to 7 minutes, so it makes sense that the Avada's ones are so much more expensive. 
Let's just quickly do the maths. Three of the Defender 20 batteries would theoretically give you 21 minutes of flight time. Theoretically. For a whopping $57. That is half the price of the Avada's single battery. Now, the controller is also a blessing for this because you can literally use whatever controller you want, whether it's a $45 ELRS remote or a $250 Crossfire remote like I've got. The choice is totally up to you, and if for some reason you really like DJI's remote, you can use that as well, just maybe don't because it's super limiting in the long run, at least personally. All right, next feature, actual fast charging. As long as you're using a wall plug that can give out like 30 watts or more, pretty much, it's called Quick Charge or Quick Charge 3, QC3, there's plenty of different ways to say it, but whatever it is, as long as it's got that capability, you're gonna be able to charge these batteries to 80% in just, it's about 18 minutes. Now, I've actually used this feature multiple times now, even when I was out on one of my first flights, I just plugged this charger with the battery into it, into my car's cigarette USB port, and I was back out there flying, and I think it was 20 minutes or a little bit less. It's a super handy feature, especially because, you know, you get five minutes of flight time from a 20 minute charge. And then now for that feature that I didn't expect to like, but I've actually really ended up loving, it's a button. Yeah, no, like seriously, it's a simple um, on and off button. That's, that's pretty much it. Now it's on and now it's off. Believe it or not, most FPV drones do not have an on and off button and just start up the second that you plug the battery in. And I don't know if it's because of the simplicity behind, you know, just having a button or if it's the fact that you can just have the battery sitting in the quad ready to roll without it being on. But whatever it is, this little button, I damn well love this button. Anyway, not everything is roses and there are indeed a few thorns on this drone. Do you like that metaphor? I don't know, I kind of just came up with it. Anyways, one of them is an easy fix and two of them are not. The easy fix one, which is a tad of a pain, but it's it's workable with, it's the ND filter situation. Now, I've got normal O3 air unit ND filters to make sure I have, you know, my camera settings optimized for cinematic footage, and hey, they do their job well on anything that is an O3 unit, but the Defender 20 comes with a stripped down light O3 air unit, presumably to lower the weight, and with that also comes a completely different mounting system for the ND filters. So yeah, you do have to buy separate filters if you've already got O3 ones, you gotta buy completely new ones that fit on this camera here, but the good news here is they're like 14 bucks for a set of three, so eh. Now on the flip side to that, what are these two issues that can't be solved simply, you might be thinking? The first is the power. And look, a 3S drone of this weight is gonna feel pretty damn underpowered to most experienced pilots. The thing here is, if you're buying this, you're most likely not an experienced pilot, and so in my opinion, the power to weight ratio is actually pretty adequate. You'll be able to cruise around and chase things like bikes, cars, I mean, I, I chased the car for a little bit, and that was absolutely fine. Pretty much anything that's less than 75 kilometers, the things that, you know, go less than that speed, you're gonna be fine, but once you reach that point, you're gonna very much so have reached its limit. It's not gonna be the drone for you if you wanna dive things and it doesn't really feel super zippy, and it also doesn't cut through decent wind without introducing a decent amount of shake to the camera. And saying that, it's been pretty damn windy when I've been flying, and I mean pretty damn windy, and this thing does actually handle reasonably well. So it's going to depend on your intended use cases and your experience, but what I can say as someone with three years of flying under my belt in multiple different quads, this thing does fly really smoothly and I feel like its power is suited perfectly to someone who's buying it as a first drone to use and abuse. But then there's this one last thing that just, it really does grind my gears, but it doesn't have too much of an impact on anything, really. <laughs> that thing is the way that the camera is mounted to the drone. It uses a couple of tiny, tiny little rubber mounts that essentially take the micro vibrations from the drone frame out so it doesn't go into the camera. It allows you to have like non-jittery footage and get rid of as much of that jello as possible. The thing is, it works and it seems to do its job well. What doesn't work for me though is the fact that it also means you can't really hard lock the camera into any angle. So every time you crash or pull out from the carry bag and you knock the camera, you're gonna need to tilt it back to where you want it. Thankfully though, it does not shift while you're actually flying. So it's locked in enough for it to be a stable flight without camera angle movement, but yeah, it's a small gripe. Now look, if none of those shortcomings sound like a deal breaker to you, then, well, this drone really won't disappoint. However, 
What will be disappointing is if you're not able to fly it. That's why I've made this video here that runs you through the basics of everything you need to know to get started with FPV drones. That's what controller to buy, goggles, and a few tips I wish I'd known earlier to help me learn faster. So I'll see you over there.